Ofer, or Offer in Israel writes to me, Hey Paul, I have a three-way active crossover system. That's a digital crossover feeding three stereo amps that control the low, mid, and high of a three-way speaker. This gives more control of the drivers as opposed to passive crossovers that lets the user change slopes, phase timing, all that good stuff. This configuration is common in professional audio, but is practically non-existent outside the do-it-yourself realm in home audio, even with expensive hi-fi gear. That is true. Why do you think that is, knowing all of the advantages? I think it's a combination of reasons. I think most people don't want to futz with it. I think most people would prefer something like we make. Take a pair of Aspen FR10s. Well, I guess my favorite little full range loudspeaker, okay? You take a pair of Aspen FR10s, you hook them up within an hour of unboxing them, you've got amazing sound coming out of your home. In the case where we had, which we don't, a three-way crossover system, you take it home, you're going to spend hours futzing around trying to get everything right. And you need three amplifiers, you need tons of cables, you need all sorts of stuff to make this work. Why? So you can futz around with it? Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I, I understand the twiddle knob thing. And I understand the control people get on those kinds of systems. And, and yeah, it's kind of cool. I don't think it's for most people. I think most people want to have something just work. I'll tell you a good, a little good story. Terry has always had one of these frame TVs in, in, on her wish list, right? They're, they're, they're made by Samsung. It, it's kind of a matte finish and it's got a frame. It looks like a photo or a painting stuck up on the wall. Very th slim, goes right up against the wall. So we finally, finally got one. It's pretty cool. And had our friend an electrician come over and you know drilling wires and fishing things down so you don't see anything. And here's this frame TV sitting up there. Now I'm thinking, okay, great. Now it's time to move my little Sonos soundbar out of there. Um, we're going to get a, a, we're just going to do just a standard installation, right? So we hook this thing up. Here's the Samsung uh, soundbar. And I'm looking at the instructions going, oh Lord. It's, you know, there's four ways to connect it. You can connect it optically, coaxially, uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. And I'm thinking, oh, here's, here goes my Saturday afternoon, right? All I really want to do is just hook this thing up and watch some TV and make Terry happy, right? So I got the instruction manual out and I'm, I'm, I'm the technical help here. We hook this thing up, TV's on, we plug it in. I turn around to grab the instruction manual and I turn back around and there on the screen it said, I see you have a Samsung uh, sandbar, whatever the hell the model is. And do you want to connect it? Wow. Boop. Connected. That's it. That's what I wanted. And I think most of us, I think audiophiles, most of us, we, we like futzing around with our system, trying this amp, that DAC, that cable, all that stuff. But once it's in place, I think we just want to let it roll and let the music wash over us. That's my guess. All right. Thanks for the question.